The series One Punch Man takes place on an Earth that has mad scientists and is consistently being attacked by aliens and monsters who attack the surface world because they feel humans have disrespected the Earth. After the main character, Saitama, saves a child from a monster, a superhero organization is formed. And superheroes start popping up. Later, Saitama trains so hard to become a superhero that he becomes so powerful that he can defeat anyone with just one punch. In my 2014 review of the manga, I said that One Punch Man was one of the two best superhero comics of that year. So when I learned that it was going to be turned into an anime this year, it immediately became my most anticipated show of this year. And you know what? There were some clues that it was going to be a great series. So let's take a look at some aspects of the series. First, the music and sound. Jam Project is doing the opening, so expect something fast paced and some crazy guitar. It does exactly what an action opening should do. You get jazz for the show and have that emotion carry on into the episode. That said, I feel the best piece of music is the main theme, Saitama's theme. It has peaks and valleys and it builds up to a triumphant moment. It has a heroic overcoming all odds feeling to it. The tone of the soundtrack and the way it's used in the show is why I feel that this series is more of a satire than just a broad spoof. If it was just a spoof, the tone would be the same all throughout. Now, the only piece of music I didn't like was the ending thing. It seems slow and mundane, but maybe that's the point. The series is a mixture of high action and the mundaneness of everyday life. The animation. Madhouse is doing the animation, and because of that, you know this will be a very faithful adaption. And that the animation will have the cleanest, brightest, non-saturated, most fluid animation around. The only exception to that when it comes to Madhouse is the supernatural anime, but we'll let that slide. The only negative I can think about the animation quality is it's not great in every episode. Don't misunderstand, average Madhouse animation is better than most shows. I can only assume because of economic constraints that a bulk of the money was spent on the first couple of episodes and the last couple of episodes. The TV series solves one of the issues I have with the comic. The comic chapters are released monthly, and some chapters are 20 pages long, and some are between 2 to 7 pages long. And this messes up the flow of the story. And so without the erratic page count, this story flows actually really well, better here in the anime than in the manga. Next, the characters. As far as the characters go, the main focus is on Saitama and Genos. And they're fine, but the issues I had with them and the supporting cast in the manga haven't been rectified in the anime. The characters are still basically one note. That said, they are enjoyable for the most part, and this is supposed to be a superhero spoof, and spoofs tend not to have a lot of strong characterization. Voice acting wise, the acting is superb. The voice actors sound just how I imagine the characters would sound in the comic. The Saitama Lord Boris fight. This is both the best and worst part of the series. It's an amazing fight, it's the pinnacle of the story because of what's at stake and that Saitama has to actually put some effort into this fight. Because I mean hell, Lord Boris doesn't even go down as after the typical one punch. After examining the fight again, I realized that Boris is a dark reflection of Saitama. Unlike Saitama who walked around searching for people or monsters more stronger than him, Boris traveled the universe. There is obviously more story after this point, but this is a great part for the anime to end on because the problem in the manga is nothing has surpassed this fight since. Yes, more characters have popped up and we get to learn a little bit more about them. And yes, we also have several story threads introduced, but none of those threads have really been jumped on. Plus, since the Boris fight, there hasn't been a valid threat posed to Saitama. Here's an example. Silver Fang's former pupil, Garo, he's been built up and he took down a ton of heroes, but of course, when he fought Saitama, it ended in just one punch. Ugh. Right now, it appears that Garo's being built up again, but I mean, come on, we know what's gonna happen. Plus, with the exception of maybe one technique, has Garo really gotten that more powerful in like over the course of a few hours? With all that being said, I do recommend the anime. I, in fact, I re recommend it strongly. The manga, however, I recommend it, but it's a mild recommend. 
The anime was a blast and it's easy to get into because of the subject matter and because of the low episode count. The manga is also easy to get into, however lately it appears to be spinning its gears. It's still worth a read, however, if the page count doesn't increase and it doesn't stay consistent and if the story doesn't evolve any further, I may have to drop off the series off my reading list this time next year. And that's all I have for right now. If you'd like to respond, please comment below. And if you'd like to see more videos, check out my playlist. And until next time, goodbye.